Hello, everybody. Um, Vladimir Bulatov uh, is going to present today. He got his PhD in quantum physics from St. Petersburg University. Um, and most recently, he is working um, as a research scientist in Shapeways, uh, where they're working on ways to turn uh, three-dimensional models into something that can be printed. And this is what uh, he will talk about today. Thank you very much for invitation. Uh, I will start, so my talk is called 3D modeling for 3D printing, and I will start with uh, a few examples of what I was doing about 10 years ago. I was building uh, wood sculptures, and uh, about this size, and uh, it is like a few examples. This one is a uh, uh, small stellated dodecahedron, and it is uh, uh, based on uh, 12 pentagonal stars interlocked in the space and made from uh, walnut and oak. This is very long name, stellated, st stellation of small stellated truncated dodecahedron. And it was actually the first uh, model I built and uh, it was quite a challenge to make it, it has about like 200 different parts. Another one is a great decahedron and uh, 12, 12 identical shapes is uh, five arms each. And uh, pentagonal hexagon decahedron, uh, it has uh, pentagonal faces and uh, uh, 60 of these identical faces. And this is a installation of rhombic uh, tricantahedron. Uh, tricantahedron is uh, 30 faces, uh, mean, uh, in, uh, translated in Greek. Uh, made of uh, maple and uh, uh, purple heart. And uh, this is another installation of uh, rhombic tricantahedron, also 30 identical faces, but uh, made like in curved shapes. And uh, installation of tetrakis hexahedron, it is uh, uh, tw tw 24 identical faces. So uh, how things are actually done? So traditional way of uh, making uh, this is to uh, buy nice, uh, to f first of all, to get uh, a lot of tools. Like uh, what I have, like it is partial list at the table. So drill press, uh, disc sander, belt sander, router table, bent saw, saw, planer, dust collectors, a few of them, uh, different hand tools. And uh, like uh, list can be, can be continued. Next step, uh, it is you get uh, several uh, boards of uh, nice hardwood. In this case, it is walnut, uh, myrtle, myrtle wood. It is growing only in uh, on Oregon coast and uh, bird eye maple. And uh, you making uh, drawing, uh, making templates, and making jigs for actually building stuff. And uh, jigs, it is. Uh, to help you to assemble pieces in space and building jigs usually takes much more times than the actually the actual piece because uh, you mail you making jigs to uh, help you to do stuff but nobody helping you to make jigs which are also complex structures and uh, after that you cut, cut, cut this board in several pieces uh, in uh, in uh, several directions and uh, finally, uh, uh, few, no, normally it took me about four weeks of uh, 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 work of bridging uh, uh, wood dust and uh, getting to a final uh, assembly of this piece. And uh, five years later, and it's still collecting dust and it's not finished, unfortunately. It, it, it was the last piece kind of uh, after that I stopped doing wood. Uh, high-tech way of making things. You have, you can use a 3D printer. And uh, what I was doing since uh, I start, start uh, doing wood, uh, I will show you an example of uh, uh, how direct metal printing is organized, how, how it is done. Is the mouse on the screen? No? Okay, I, I will try to leave without mouse. So it is like a, a big table which has a powder supply and uh, uh, building uh, 
bed with the powder bed. And uh, uh, from powder supply, uh, leveling roller pushes uh, uh, new layers of powder uh, to the building area. And uh, building area are kind of uh, going down and uh, powder supply going up. And uh, every layer, there is like inkjet head, which uh, build uh, cr cross section of the uh, for, for building parts. So how it uh, like uh, works schematically, you uh, uh, deposit a thin, very thin layer of uh, steel powder and uh, inkjet head deposit uh, uh, liquid adhesive uh, uh, into a, a specific cross section. You make another layer of powder, another cross section of uh, adhesive. And uh, doing so in for many hours, but uh, computer time doesn't cost your time. And finally, uh, when uh, the whole piece is built, uh, you remove the loose powder. And uh, the part is uh, uh, heated to, uh, first, of all, first of all, it is dried to 300 Fahrenheit for glue. Uh, the water is evaporated and glue uh, solidified. And next step, uh, the part is heated to 2,000 Fahrenheit. And in this case, during this process, uh, glue is burned out and uh, stainless steel powder is uh, sintered and uh, the particles of powder uh, 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 connected together almost melted but not melted. Uh, next step, uh, this sintered part is uh, uh, brought in contact with molten bronze and uh, uh, molten bronze, uh, uh, like uh, liquid, it will, uh, via capillary reaction, it will, fills, it will fill all the voids between particles of powder. And so we can now remove the uh, cool part down, and it is a solid composite of steel and bronze, and then it can be finished in any uh, standard way which uh, used for finishing metals. So a few examples of uh, uh, metal pieces I did using uh, this technology. Uh, it is, uh, you can see all, all, all of them kind of based on uh, uh, geometric uh, uh, symmetry. Uh, some of them are on hyperbolic symmetry, some of them on uh, Euclidean symmetries. It is uh, like uh, part is very, very thin, uh, uh, like bridges, and basically uh, I, has, I had several of them broken during finishing even. I also did a few of uh, uh, pendants using uh, hyperbolic symmetry, another one, and uh, they are gold-plated, it is stainless steel again, and uh, several bracelets uh, based on uh, hyper hyperbolic geometry. Uh, but there is still another way of doing things which is kind of a little bit more advanced and uh, more easy for users. It is, I call it shape ways of way of making things, which basically it is like so, uh, outlined here. It is uh, like s s several steps. First of all, you got idea and make your design the way you can in computer and upload it to shape ways, choose the materials and uh, instantly got uh, pricing how much it will cost you. And uh, shape way will fabricate a part for you ship to you directly worldwide and uh, basically you got your part uh, finish it and uh, don't even kind of getting your hands dirty a uh, few short information about uh, shapeways what it is right now so uh, it, it exists for about six years it is uh, still startup uh, about two weeks ago we got like uh, uh, Final, hopefully, uh, round of funding was uh, 30 million from uh, investor in Silicon Valley, and uh, Shepway is located in uh, headquarters in uh, New, York, uh, New York City. And uh, we have uh, uh, built so far one million, pa uh, one, 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 one million uh, products and shipped to customers. And uh, the same number, very recently, our system administrator got, we have like got also one million different parts uploaded by user. So like count of actually models, which we keep, uh, keep, keep in our database also over one million. Suddenly some parts uh, never were printed, some parts were printed in a few thousand. And so uh, also they are uh, 30 different materials and we have uh, 80 employees at the moment and uh, it is growing 
uh, every day by uh, uh, number of employees. And uh, at this moment, uh, we have uh, two factories. One factory it is uh, located in New York, in Long Island City, and uh, another is located in Eindhoven in Europe. And uh, how actually, like three kind of users uh, Shipway has, uh, 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 three, three, three categories of users. One category is uh, it is uh, makers, people actually who build the product, who want to do something for, for themselves, and uh, uh, they buy the product and uh, they uh, use it for whatever they want it to use. So it, it is like uh, s several steps: it is to upload the model, upload, uh, create a model, upload design. Yeah. Is better? Can everybody hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, select materials and ship it. Another category of uh, actually users it is uh, people who don't uh, uh, do who don't who don't design the, uh, the project uh, the, uh, the objects, but uh, just by uh, the uh, object which we have in uh, the database. And another category of users, it is, uh, uh, and basically it's probably the most important one, it is people who are doing design to allow other users to buy this design. So they are more uh, serious about uh, designing specifically nice and useful things and uh, which other people will be ready to buy. And uh, it is basically uh, like, the, the, the base of our user, who, and we have uh, about 10,000 of uh, shop owners uh, at this moment at uh, Shapeways. So, a uh, few, few photos of the actual pre pre printing process uh, we, uh, we, we use. So, uh, like the printing, there are, are different printers, different models, uh, and uh, different materials, uh, but uh, like all, all the printing it is basically done by layer by layer. In the, a little bit different technologies. Uh, interesting part, actually, how you extract the actual model from the printed area. It is uh, at this moment, and uh, it is basically a hand uh, task to use uh, whatever tools are possible uh, to get uh, uh, printed model from the block of material of lo loose powder. And uh, you can see on the photos on the left, it is quite dirty job, and uh, people there is like in some protective gears. You don't want to have this in your garage shop to uh, have all the dust around. And uh, so cleaning again, and after that we have uh, several of, uh, steps of post-processing. It is uh, tumblers with uh, uh, ad uh, abrasive media and also di different kind of uh, finishing uh, to uh, have parts of make uh, it of different colors, quite dirty job as well. Uh, what kind of materials we have? Uh, all, co uh, all the combination of different finishes and uh, uh, base materials. Uh, there are about 30 of them, but like uh, uh, basic one is uh, alumite uh, and uh, uh, plus a couple of. Uh, S several uh, types of uh, alumite. It is basically it is plastic with uh, addition of uh, aluminum, and it is c c quite much stronger than uh, uh, usual plastics. Several uh, kind of plastics, uh, several uh, uh, st uh, types of stainless steel, uh, silver, uh, uh, full color. Uh, uh, we call it full color st sandstone. It, it is uh, kind of like a plaster. Uh, which uh, uh, binded with uh, super glue-like uh, binder. And uh, very interesting material is uh, ceramics. It is actually uh, like a clay, which is uh, built in three dimension, fired and uh, glazed. I, I will show uh, just a few examples of what uh, users are doing from these materials. So, so these are uh, materials of plastics. Uh, these are also several examples of plastics, so people are doing uh, uh, lamp or uh, like some uh, hol holder for pencil and uh, bookmarks and uh, coaster and uh, these uh, few examples uh, alumite you can see uh, like, like uh, it is possible to build parts which are interconnected and uh, kind of uh, they are not 
uh, they, they are loose, they kind of can uh, move, move uh, independently from each other. It is a part on the uh, lower left. And a uh, few examples for like uh, Apple fans and uh, what do people doing with color. Uh, what is uh, 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 this plastic, which is called uh, frosted ultra details? It is very, very precise, and uh, people doing it a lot of uh, building model trains and uh, all kind of models. And uh, uh, what, what they are doing, uh, they paint uh, this by hand. Test. Test. Uh, is it better? Is it better, so? One test. Okay, so uh, people paint it uh, by, ha by hand to ma make actually a very uh, good competition to model building industry because uh, model building industry basically they take years to uh, for new models to appear. Uh, now, uh, uh, like makers just create models uh, in uh, one month uh, after object is created and they. Uh, a, a, a lot of people who actually want to, the, to, to, to have these models for themselves. So ceramics, it is uh, actually, uh, you can build actual coffee cups from ceramics and uh, it is very safe material for to be saved uh, with the food. And silver, it is mostly used for jewelry, but uh, any application is possible. And uh, stainless steel also, uh, very much used for jewelry. It is the one which I use myself most of the time. And the uh, nice thing about all this city uh, printing is that uh, uh, the cost does not, uh, uh, the cost of production is, has not, no, no relation with complexity of the, to complexity of the uh, object. Uh, this is example of uh, kinetic sculptures by uh, uh, sculptor from Holland, uh, Theo Jensen. And uh, he has like a uh, few meters size, these walking sculptures. They are basically wind, uh, wind driven. They are just uh, walk by themselves on, uh, uh, on the beaches in Holland, uh, uh, which kind of uh, something unexpected thing before you see it. But uh, uh, also he, he made uh, these models available in a like small scale about like a few inches size and you blow on it uh, into this uh, like fan and actually it will walk uh, on the table and it is built uh, as a one piece so uh, now we are going to uh, how actually uh, 3d modeling so uh, uh, the technology is here to print things but how we can do uh, how, how we can uh, mo mo model these things in more uh, in uh, most easy way. Uh, uh, traditional 3D modeling, it is kind of not easy task. You have to place a uh, uh, few polygons in space, somehow uh, 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 arrange them. And uh, uh, what I'm showing here, it is uh, a simple process of refining the surface. Uh, and uh, finally, you get a very nice uh, smooth surface from the kind of uh, uh, original rough uh, 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 polygons. And uh, several, uh, like more uh, real life examples, uh, uh, what I used for my metal sculptures before. Uh, uh, this, during this refining, uh, we have, like, from original uh, uh, shape, which is uh, hard to understand what it is and uh, definitely has no aesthetic values, and uh, getting into some uh, nicely, uh, ni nice organic shape. And few more examples. Uh, uh, of uh, these pieces, and it is really a hard uh, job, kind, kind of uh, these uh, special software packages for doing, but uh, very uh, actually, I would say somebody counted these maybe 1,000 actually 3D developers, 3D modelers in the world, maybe not, maybe not 1,000, maybe 10,000, but uh, there is much more actually people who can draw and uh, very few people uh, can think in the terms of triangles and uh, points and polygons but uh, nowadays everybody uh, can uh, camera and can take uh, pictures and uh, uh, many people just can uh, draw on paper and scan it and uh, how we can actually uh, 
uh, give uh, this creative folks ability to create complex 3D objects, not like just simple one to build few boxes on top of each other, but actually something uh, which uh, will be comparable with what can, can be drawn. And uh, natural approach for this, it is use uh, uh, raster graphics in 3D. Uh, so just a few words, uh, difference between vector graphics and raster graphics. So in vector graphics and uh, triangles in uh, uh, 3D, the traditional 3D modeling, it is uh, description of object via, via vector graphics, via triangles. So in uh, vector graphics, we, we have uh, shapes they are described as a set of geometric, uh, geometric drawing primitives. But uh, image in, in uh, raster graphics is described as a rectangular array of individual pixels. And color of each pixel is represented by values of its uh, red, green, green, blue components. And uh, before, like on the earlier stages of uh, ink printing technologies, uh, they were based on uh, uh, vector graphics. So it was like PostScript is still used uh, today, but uh, mostly it was designed to have a compact presentation. And nowadays, uh, uh, what is useful it is useful as a um, transfer format and uh, uh, format for drawing simple. Uh, Sim, uh, more simple graphics like maps or uh, diagrams. And uh, uh, good compact representation for raster graphics uh, was uh, introduced much later than uh, the vector graphics like uh, JPEG or PNG. And, uh, but uh, today, uh, kind of raster graphics is uh, only used for photos and video. And I guess uh, photos and videos, it is the most graphics in the world right now. And uh, um, all uh, before uh, I was uh, I, I joined Shapeways. I was uh, doing uh, uh, was uh, in, was very familiar with two-dimensional printing technology and uh, can kind of confirm that all the modern printing technologies uh, two-dimensional they are based on uh, on uh, raster graphics like vector graphics remain there like a legacy support only. At the same time, uh, uh, memory requirement of raster graphics is not an issue anymore, and basically raster graphics is the way to go for two-dimensional. So how we can go uh, with uh, 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 raster graphics for uh, three-dimensional object? Uh, uh, most widely used uh, 3D printing technologies, they are based on slicing 3D models into thin slices, and uh, after that uh, processing each slice uh, using two-dimensional two image processing algorithm. And uh, many of these uh, two-dimensional algorithms, they are uh, purely raster, uh, raster based, and uh, uh, some of the three-dimensional printers, they accept external 2D slices data in the form of vector graphics, but still convert uh, data internally into uh, raster graphics. And uh, for in the uh, uh, slicing three-dimensional object, each slice uh, gives us uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional x-y grid of uh, pixels. And uh, if uh, we will uh, stack this uh, two-dimensional grid of pixels on top of each other, uh, it is natural to just to deal. Uh, 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 handle this stack of pixels, uh, of pixel images, as a single three-dimensional uh, grid of voxels. And uh, here we come uh, uh, with uh, like, uh, main uh, current software product uh, Shapeways developing. It's called AppFab uh, Voxel-based toolkit. Uh, AppFab, it is uh, uh, AppFab 3D. Uh, AppFab is came uh, basically from uh, the developer who started this, Alan Hudson, uh, he is a big fan of uh, English sitcom. But now it's absolutely fabulous 3D printing toolkit. And uh, it is an uh, open source uh, toolkit uh, and uh, quite liberal uh, GNU LGPL license. Uh, so it is uh, possible to use uh, this uh, toolkit in a closed source application as a library. And the, uh, this toolkit is specifically targeted to uh, facilitate process of 3D printing and modeling for 3D printing. And uh, first version, 
I mean, version one, which is kind of before there was version zero point something. Now version one was released just two weeks ago. And it is uh, uh, downloadable uh, from the website of Fab 3D. Uh, so how actually like part of this voxel based library first of all it has a way of converting uh, voxels or converting triangles to uh, voxels uh, the triangulated polygonal models uh, into voxel grid and uh, it has a quite unique algorithm uh, which is based on uh, uh, generalization of two-dimensional rasterization with using of uh, multiple layered uh, z buffer uh, 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 what we can do with grids, uh, kind of uh, all kind of transformations uh, 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 which people uh, uh, usually have in uh, like vector-based space, uh, like translation. Uh, if you will try to translate uh, grid uh, uh, grid object in space uh, uh, and use uh, like na na naive way of uh, 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 like. Uh, translate coordinates of each voxels into space and uh, uh, it basically works but uh, if you uh, do some other transformations like for example scaling of the grid if you'll translate uh, coordinates of uh, each uh, voxels voxel of uh, original grid uh, if you'll transform each coordinate of each voxel of original grid uh, by scaling it we will have new grids so in this case I, I scaled just exactly by two factor two a uh, new grid uh, became uh, like uh, just like a bunch of uh, disconnected voxels in space. Uh, so what is uh, correct solution? We actually have to work in opposite direction. We have to apply uh, work not in direct uh, apply not to direct transformation to the voxels in original grid, but have to apply inverse transformation to the voxels in destination grid. So for each voxel in uh, grid. Uh, G2, we have to find uh, to which voxels correspond, and sometimes in this scale, uh, it will be uh, several voxels will correspond to the same voxel in one grid, but uh, in this case, we will have uh, like uh, solid uh, field space. And in general, for any transformations, we shouldn't use uh, naive way of transformations, applying direct transformation, but everywhere uh, uh, transforming grids, you should apply inverse transformations uh, and work in opposite directions. Uh, the same way uh, it works for we want to uh, if you want to have a composition of several transformations and uh, uh, inverse of composition it is a composition of inverse transformation but taken in reverse order which is also a kind of important thing to keep in mind uh, yes uh, normally uh, uh, normally um, uh, inverse transformations is uh, very often very difficult to uh, calculate. Uh, not all transformations uh, can have uh, directly calculated reverse transformation. Sometimes uh, it may be uh, uh, easy, sometimes it may be difficult, but this is one special uh, uh, case of uh, inverse transformations, uh, of transformations which easy to calculate inverse transformations as linear transformations which just apply to the uh, which represented the matrices and uh, inverse uh, uh, transformation of these matrices uh, it is just uh, inversion of original matrices so what we can do with grids uh, very simple uh, are boolean operation if you want to do like some union of several objects basically it is like we're doing it voxel by voxel and these uh, calculations are mostly trivial it is for union for intersection and for difference uh, it is like few lines of code for actually uh, calculating result. If you compare it with uh, taking like union of uh, raster uh, based models, it is uh, in general, it is very, very difficult task to make it robust and uh, without problems. And uh, like the, the evil is in details. Uh, mo most of the problems are to deal with uh, degenerate cases of the, like several uh, tri triangles in one plane and several triangles uh, just like hitting uh, with uh, 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 like touching each other over the edge 
and uh, but uh, with uh, voxels it is basically trivial and very robust uh, but uh, this is uh, very easy natural way to work with, with grid but basically uh, we need to go back to triangles uh, why we need to go back to triangles because uh, uh, all the current format which accept all the all the printers it is uh, uh, vector based uh, triangles format and uh, uh, also the file for the file size if you uh, uh, my, uh, can be much more compact if uh, we will convert it to triangles and uh, have it into in the grid form and also visualization is much more e easier when we deal with triangles and uh, uh, simple way of uh, uh, converting uh, back to triangles if you will take just either surface of the uh, grid values for example here is the torus and uh, I intentionally took it like a low resolution grid and uh, it, it is reasonable we have this uh, stair st 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 structure uh, which is voxel sizes but uh, uh, it uh, problem is uh, it is uh, very huge count of triangles uh, normally is for reasonable size models it is up to 10 million triangles and um, uh, it basically will overload uh, any desktop PC to display even these 10 million triangles uh, what we can do it is to reduce number of triangles using uh, algorithm which is implemented in the 3 d it is a triangle reduction algorithm it still it joins uh, triangles into uh, like make a bigger size triangles but still this st stair uh, uh, step structure remain because it is too like rough to be able to fall green to deal with uh, uh, triangle reduction uh, the solution for this is actually we, uh, we need to get rid of uh, like hard uh, uh, grid which has like zero and one values and go to the grid with uh, like more a continuous value for voxels inside of the uh, grid uh, having maximum value for voxels outside of the object having zero value and uh, voxels which intersect surface of the object have some intermediate values and uh, for this uh, the same torus uh, uh, rendered on uh, like uh, uh, this anti-aliased grid uh, we have a very smooth torus and uh, after uh, decimation uh, uh, triangle reduction we reduce it, uh, uh, triangle count for, count for this triangle uh, for this torus from 59,000 for to 3,000 triangles. So now uh, I will show you simple application, simple kind of real life application of uh, AppFab 3D. Uh, it is uh, uh, we call it a ring creator. And uh, let's start. Uh, if you want to make a ring, let's start with a so, so, so solid block of. Uh, um, material uh, about size of uh, one millimeter wide uh, five millimeter or uh, uh, one millimeter thick five millimeter wide and 60 millimeter long it is basically to the size which you need to wrap it around your finger this voxel size one thousand one one uh, tenth of a millimeter it actually consists of very uh, triangle count for this block of uh, material is uh, hundred seventy thousand triangles and uh, uh, we can reduce number of triangles for this uh, very easy by uh, uh, the decimation algorithm. Uh, and, um, and after that, uh, let's take just arbitrary two-dimensional image. And uh, this two-dimensional image can be uh, converted by uh, AppFab uh, 3D object uh, with deal with uh, can create three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional object from this three-dimensional image for, for three-dimensional object from two-dimensional image and uh, each uh, the, uh, the image can be tiled in both directions but uh, in this case it only tiled in x direction and now we join uh, this uh, block of uh, uh, solid block of material with this uh, pattern which we apply it and uh, bend it into a ring and uh, we can add some like subtract using different subtract uh, uh, two-dimensional text from inside of the ring uh, add uh, like a couple of bands on top of uh, on both sides of the ring and uh, finally uh, have like some uh, rounded profile to the ring this, this profile is not quite visible here 
I kind of show example. So if you will just play, uh, take plain ring, it has uh, this rectangular, flat, uh, 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 rectangular profile and it has very sharp edges. Instead, we can uh, have uh, like this profile, uh, we can uh, draw any two dimensional object and uh, use it as uh, this profile. In this case, it is like some kind of rounded shape and uh, which feels very nice on the uh, uh, finger, a little bit more uh, uh, fancy profile and even more a fancy profile, maybe it is like a bracelet and it is an arbitrary image which can be used for like a shape in uh, each direction. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, like functionality wrapped in a, a nice uh, web-based interface uh, which is as right, right at this moment is buying launched by uh, on Shapeway website. It is in uh, beta version. Tomorrow it will be demonstrated on Maker Faire. Uh, basically, it is like uh, almost ready to go uh, prime time. And uh, it all is based like uh, front end. It is uh, like code on our server. Back end, it is uh, application which is uh, part of AppFab 3D. And this application can be customizable, uh, checked, uh, customizable by, by other programmers checked how it works and made uh, nice customizable other creators for other object. And it is uh, like a couple of screenshots for this web interface, uh, uh, how it works. Another application uh, for uh, AppFab, it is something which I did for fun for myself. It is like much more complex uh, object uh, based on uh, like a uh, fractal geometry of um, uh, uh, on inversive uh, inversive geometry. Uh, it is uh, like very complex uh, set which is, has no boundary. It is like a counter set, but at the same time, it is possible to convert it into basically printer uh, printable object using AppFab 3D. And it is uh, I. I may made few of them and uh, we'll have them tomorrow on Maker's Fair. And that's basically it what I wanted to uh, talk about. And uh, three links, shapeface.com, where all the our company stuff is, AppFab 3D, it is where this voxel modeling library is, and uh, my website, bulatov.org. It is where I have my sculptures and uh, my uh, jewelry. Thank you very much. So I guess questions. <laughs> Uh, repeat the question how much it costs uh, to make sense. Uh, the cost is uh, basically uh, like um, me measured by amount of materials. It is uh, like for these rings, it is like if uh, you want to make them from steel, it is will be like under ten dollars, maybe five, five, eight dollars. If it uh, from silver, it may, may be, uh, maybe somewhere going like thirty dollars or something. And the big one, what's the biggest thing you can? The, 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 the built area for our steel printers is about uh, one meter by half meter by uh, uh, quarter meter. And I was given a quarter how much it would cost. It was $15,000 to cost this, to print this built area. And uh, it was out of question to actually to build in this. <laughs> Uh, you know uh, how HP is doing business model of printing on paper. They sell you printer for free and uh, charge you hand and leg for uh, ink. It is uh, it is business model which is not, not has no relation with actually 
how how much stuff is cost. So basically, like for for three D printing, materials cost something. I don't know who charging for them. How who decides they should cost this much? It is demand and supply. Both. So so far, nobody give you away three D printers for free. Maybe in ten years, will be. So the printers will be given for free and materials will cost a lot. At this moment, you don't have, if you're uh, using Shapeway, you don't pay for printer, you pay for actually for object you made. Yeah. So when you're when you're working with with uh, tool steel, one of the problems is that when you uh, when you set it, it'll it can warp a little bit. Do you have any problems with conventional um, yeah. change on tooling when you're doing the centering? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, it is uh, it uh, like some reduction, like point. There is some some percent of uh, re reduction in size, which is taken into account before actually sending model to the printer. Right, but, but so if I print a large-ish stainless steel thing and then I and then I have it filled with bronze, I can count on. I can count on uh, it is uh, uh, people who are actually running the process. They. It is uh, many years of uh, research. They t they t trying to take it into account. In rea rea the reality is, sometimes model breaks. Uh, maybe uh, somebody just slams the door next to the printer, and uh, some layer separation happens. Uh, there is uh, still uh, uh, it is just uh, they break with no reason. Sometimes they break during this uh, cooling, heating, and annealing. With no reason, it is a little bit black magic uh, still. Right. Okay. So, so these complex things, I think you've run the central domains that you made. Um, how did you model those? Did you use your own software? Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 uh, how, how I modeled this uh, dodecahedrons, uh, which I did so in the beginning of the talk. Uh, yes, I wrote my own software for this and. Uh, Basically, like every model was like a specific piece of code, and uh, like some framework for actually making user interface to uh, help to to model it. Yeah, there's another one. Seems to me people are already building new multiple materials, and we are trying, at least in AppFab 3D, we are trying to already support multiple materials. Uh, we don't uh, have it, uh, this technology at shape ways yet, but uh, we don't develop printing technology. But uh, there is a lot of experiments with uh, uh, multiple materials. Specifically, it seems to me people doing like printing object with uh, circuit boards uh, already built in, so you just Plug it in and it will do some funny stuff. So pretty close. I guess it is five years. It is like a good good number. I mean, uh, in terms of availability for like commercially, I'm pretty sure that it it is very close to this number. Yeah. Thank you.